Hi there. So what we want to work on here is how do I calculate the resistance of a bunch of things connected into a circuit? Like we've seen experimentally that adding more things in series makes for a larger amount of resistance. And we've seen that adding more things in parallel makes for a smaller amount of resistance. And if I try to tie that back to a physical experience like with straws, if I connect multiple straws in series, one after another, like if I put two straws one after another, then I'm basically just making a much longer straw and that's harder to blow through. Uh, whereas if I connect two straws in parallel, they're side by side, each straw separately is in my mouth and being side by side, that's like having a wider straw and a wider straw is easier to blow through, that's less resistance. So we want to be able to work out some mathematics of like, if I combine these things in series, how much resistance will there be? If I combine these things in parallel, how much resistance will there be? Um, I want to remind you from earlier in your work, you saw that the unit that we use for measuring resistance is called an ohm. Uh, that's O-H-M. Uh, if you spell it out, and like most of our units, it's named after a person. Uh, if you write out a symbol for the unit ohms, it's the Greek letter capital omega, uh, which we'll see shortly. But if we're thinking about equivalent resistance of things in series, what I mean by equivalent resistance is the battery can't tell the difference between the battery doesn't have a brain. Um, as far as the battery is concerned, um, being connected to two things one after another or being connected to one long thing are the same as each other, like one long tube versus uh, two half length tubes in series. It's all the same to the battery. So they are equivalent situations for the battery. And as far as the battery is concerned, all that matters as far as how much current does the battery send out of the circuit, the battery experiences a resistance to shoving current around that circuit. And so we care about the equivalent resistance of the whole circuit. So if we wanted to find the equivalent resistance of things in series, we know that more things in series makes more resistance. And what I've experienced as far as students' expectations, um, this is something that most of us usually correctly predict as far as how could I figure out the amount of resistance. Um, we just add them together. If I have two things with resistance, now we've been looking at bulbs, light bulbs, because we can see something happen with the light bulbs, but you know, the, the reason why the bulb glows is because as charges move through the filament, um, it's a narrow space. And so those charges rubbing uh, makes it hot. And when things get hot enough, they glow. But we don't always see everything that gets hot glow. Um, the light bulbs are designed that way. So there are things that I can put in a circuit that have resistance that aren't light bulbs. And I just want to use, in general, I want to use the term resistor um, for now, just to mean anything I can put into a circuit that has a resistance, whether that's a light bulb or a motor, or um, we do have devices that we call resistors where their job is just to have resistance. Um, why? That's a story for another time. But I'm just going to use the term resistor in general for anything in a circuit with resistance. So we just need to add them together when they are in series. So here I've drawn a circuit diagram. Um, and this symbol here is the symbol that we use, a little squiggly line is the symbol for a resistor. So I've got a battery connected to a 15 ohm resistor and a 10 ohm resistor in series. And so to find the equivalent resistance of that whole circuit, then I just add the two numbers together, 15 ohms plus 10 ohms gives me 25 ohms. Um, not on the screen, but if I put, say, three 10 ohm resistors all in series with each other, then the equivalent resistance would be 10 ohms plus 10 ohms plus 10 ohms. It would be 30 ohms. So with series, um, it's pretty straightforward. 
And that's probably not the one that gives most of us trouble. Uh, the harder one is resistance in parallel. Resistance in parallel, the equivalent resistance, is mathematically going to be harder because we have to keep in mind adding these numbers together is not going to work. Like if I have, say, 10 ohms and 10 ohms in parallel with each other, I know that putting things in parallel makes for less resistance. So I should have a smaller resistance for the equivalent resistance than the 10 ohms of either one. Now, if I put two equal things side by side, it's just like doubling the width. So that would be like having the resistance. And it's true that if I put 10 ohms and 10 ohms in parallel with each other, the equivalent resistance is going to be 5 ohms. But what's the general pattern? Um, I can prove this to you easily after we know more stuff, but right now we don't yet know enough details for how could a person have predicted this, but this is a pattern that works. And so for right now, we're just going to take this pattern as this gives us the smaller numbers that we need, that we expect, um, and soon we can uncover why is that so? Why is this the particular correct pattern? But you can see here on the screen that the pattern is that the reciprocal of the equivalent resistance is equal to the reciprocal of our first resistor plus the reciprocal of our second resistor plus the reciprocal of the third if there is one and so on and so on. However many things there are in parallel, I would add up their reciprocals and their total would be the reciprocal of the equivalent resistance. So this one takes a little more getting used to. And down here I just have an easier way of writing that out that means the same thing uh, when you think about what raising something to the negative one power is. So here I have an example. What if I have three 15 ohm resistors all in parallel with each other? Well, the way that I work out the math, one over the equivalent resistance, one over the equivalent resistance is equal to the sum of one over 15 ohms plus one over 15 ohms plus one over 15 ohms because I've got 15, 15, 15 all in parallel. And so the reciprocal of the equivalent resistance is one over 15 ohms, one over 15 ohms plus one over 15 ohms gives me three over 15 ohms. Now three over 15 is one over five. So the equivalent resistance, and let's keep in mind that since 15 ohms was the resistance, that that ohms, and this is that uh, squiggly symbol, the Greek letter capital omega that represents ohms of resistance, the ohms was in the denominator. 15 ohms is the denominator. So the unit is in the denominator here. One over the resistance is equal to one over five ohms. And now at this point, I need to take the reciprocal of both sides. If one over the resistance is one over five ohms, then reciprocal of both sides, I get equivalent resistance equals five ohms over one or just five ohms. Now, this, ma this matches up with my expectations. If I think about, say, having three straws in my mouth all side by side, then I've tripled uh, the amount of space that I have to get air out of my mouth. So if I have three 15s all in parallel, then since that's like having three times as much space, then that should be one third of that resistance and five ohms is one third of the 15 ohms. Now this does get a little bit trickier. We can see then that conceptually this matches up, the math matches up with the concept, I hope. But this does get a little bit trickier if I have different amounts. Like let's say, um, what if this were 10 ohms and this were 20 ohms? Well, now I've got one over 15 plus one over 10 plus one over 20. Now, how do I do one over 15 plus one over 10 plus one over 20? Well, I have to find a common denominator. 
So the common denominator that I'm seeing here is going to be uh, 60 ohms. So just looking for the common denominator of 15, 10, 20. Let's see, 20 is not a common denominator, 40 isn't, 60 is. And so now that I've found a common denominator, well, I know how many sixtieths is 15? That's four sixtieths plus, gonna have to expand that a bit, four sixtieths plus six sixtieths is the second term plus three sixtieths is the last term. And so that's gonna give me 13 for a numerator and 60 for a denominator, which means that my equivalent resistance, I'm not gonna take the time writing out this in an attractive looking fraction, but the reciprocal of the equivalent resistance is 13 divided by 60 ohms. So the equivalent resistance, I take the reciprocal of that is 60 divided by 13 ohms. And so you could take a calculator and work out what that would be. Um, and something that we can always tell as a way of checking is our work correct or not, is the equivalent resistance of these things in parallel is always going to be smaller than the smallest of the things that I have connected in parallel. Because if I just had the 10 ohm resistor, that's the smallest one, if I had just the 10 ohm resistor, I would have more resistance than I get by adding these alternate pathways. And let's remember that parallel is all about having alternate pathways. So I hope that that was helpful and uh, I'll talk to you soon.